Um, yeah, thanks very much for the invitation for the talk. I'm really honored to be here. Um, the As you can see that I changed the title at the last minute. Um, for those of you who were still interested in the original one, which is to understand the magnetic field and heterostrain effects in TBG, um, the, the main result we used to work out, one with uh, David uh, Goldhaber Gordon's group, uh, is that we show that uh, heterostrain induces open orbits that leads to a non-saturating magneto resistance, uh, which has a very good agreement with the uh, on the quantitative level almost compared to experiments. And the second part is uh, the magnetic field effect in which we, uh, on the theor theoretical side, um, proposed a way of uh, constructing the finite field uh, uh, Hilbert space from the zero field basis states. Um, and uh, of course, the advantage of this uh, method is that it's very good at handling interaction phenomena, which is the focus uh, of this talk. Um, so we are going to look at the, uh, I put a really large title here, Theory of uh, Correlated Train Insulators in TBG. Um, so it's a work uh, in preparation. We hope to get the paper out as soon as possible. And uh, the work is supported at uh, Magnet Lab and, uh, uh, of course, with the more um, uh, foundation uh, uh, grants. So let me begin with a brief overview. So the device that we're interested in is twisted barrier graphene close to the magic angle. So the device is uh, prepared by stacking two monolayers of graphene on top of each other and then uh, do a very tiny twist, about 1.1 degrees, and that creates this uh, Moray pattern uh, shown on the left-hand side of the screen. The Moray circle lattice potential um, is, is on the, uh, on, 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 uh, the, the Moray unit cell is on the scale of uh, 30 nanometers compared to atomic uh, 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 unit cell size, which is on the order of uh, 100 times less. Um, however, the interesting low energy physics that people talk uh, discuss these days uh, mostly are uh, this uh, so-called eight electron uh, 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 degrees of freedom within the narrow bands. So the narrow bands, um, sorry, I couldn't use my pointer for whatever reason. The narrow bands are created basically by hybridizing the Dirac cones from the, the top layer and the bottom layer uh, through this Mori uh, circle lattice potential. And that generates these narrow bands separated from the remote bands, uh, which are shown in the, the green uh, dispersion here. So the for each uh, monolayer graphene valley and spin degrees of freedom, there are two narrow bands. Uh, and uh, the magic angle condition is such that the, uh, um, uh, the bandwidth of the narrow band becomes uh, minimal and therefore uh, one get uh, enhanced interaction effects. And of course, the platform uh, is really exciting, uh, especially after the discovery of superconductivity uh, near in the vicinity of correlated insulating states um, uh, in 2018. And uh, more importantly, this opens the avenue for studying various sorts of um, uh, 2D materials because of their um, high degree of tunability by gating, um, because the, the density range we're talking about as shown here is 10 to the 12 uh, uh, inverse square centimeter. And uh, we can add a, a relatively small magnetic field on the order of uh, 10 Tesla and still, and we would be able to probe half starter physics already. And uh, the in this work, I'm interested uh, not on the uh, uh, superconductivity side of the things. I'm more interested on the topological phenomena. So in this devices, uh, the early works, uh, I believe the first one is uh, from David uh, Goldhaber Gordon's group on this left panel, which shows that by aligning the TBG sample with the substrate uh, boron nitrite, um, and then you get this anomalous Hall effect uh, near an integer filling fraction of the narrow bands. And uh, subsequently, it was found that uh, uh, in a similar experimental setting that they are quantized uh, train insulators. And uh, also later on, um, there are two works, which one is from the uh, Dima Afetov's group, 
and the other is from the Weizmann group uh, in, in, in Israel, where they both have shown that even without the alignment near the integer filling fraction plus one, uh, they also get this hysteresis behavior, which indicates an um, um, spontaneous um, um, uh, onset of uh, uh, some, some um, anomalous Hall effect. Uh, again, for this ones, they're not quantized as far as I understand. So the more interesting phenomena, of course, uh, is the so-called correlated churn insulators, which are observed in a vast majority of experiments uh, at uh, relatively higher magnetic fields. Um, so here um, I'm showing a collection of, uh, I don't know, so some six groups of experiments. Um, so on the top left panel, as you can see from the top left, um, there are the churn states, which are uh, labeled by with churn numbers of four, three, two, one sequence, uh, which are observed. They are interestingly uh, mostly observed at high fields and uh, shows a first order phase transition into a compressible state uh, as the field is progressively lowered. And uh, this type of behavior, as you can see, is shown in both the transport measurements, which is the top left, and uh, the, the the one right below that, I believe this is an SDM measurement. Um, and uh, there are also additional SDM and uh, transport and uh, compressibility measurements, which also show very similar behaviors. So, of course, one way to try to understand um, the correlated turn insulators uh, is to think about the uh, topology of the narrow bands at zero field. So this has been well studied um, in the early days of uh, uh, 2018. So the pair of narrow bands for valley and spin degrees of freedom uh, can be shown that uh, we can try to rewrite the basis states using a pair of churn plus and minus one states. They are protected by uh, C2Z, which is the um, uh, in, 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 um, in play 180 degree rotation with respect to the Z axis, out of plane axis, um, and time reversal symmetry. So if both symmetries are present, um, one can show that I believe uh, in the second work, uh, this uh, Son et al, PRL 2019, that uh, you can have stable topologies if you have an additional symmetry, which is the particle hole symmetry. Now, of course, breaking uh, of either uh, uh, this inversion symmetry, uh, let's say by um, uh, aligning the TBG sample with uh, um, the boron nitride layer, uh, or breaking time reversal symmetry, uh, which is by adding a magnetic field, uh, they would prefer one kind of term polarization over the other. And uh, it's reasonable to imagine uh, that uh, interactions can drive the system into a churn insulating state, um, which are populating this uh, churn at the zero field uh, flavors. So this idea has been pioneered, I believe, uh, early, early days in, um, okay, let me not say who pioneered this idea because there are so many works in the literature, which uh, which uh, try to argue in along the similar manners. But uh, what I find easy for me to understand is this schematic, which is shown in this PRL paper 2021. Uh, so the idea, uh, if you look on the right-hand side panel, so there are um, uh, four flavors, and each flavor um, are split into two sectors, the trim plus one and trim minus one. Uh, there are dispersion are neglected um, in, in this uh, as, uh, illustration. So the idea is that, so to get a, let, let's say at feeling factor minus three and along the straddle line minus three minus one, to get such a correlated churn insulator, uh, what one can do is to populate uh, one uh, out of the four Term minus one flavor, uh, term minus one uh, uh, states out of the four uh, value and spin flavors. And uh, similarly, if I go to the minus two minus two line, uh, one way of the symmetry breaking that creates a term insulator is to uh, uh, just populate two of them. And uh, the list goes on. It shows this uh, 
um, uh, 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 essentially a finite field flavor symmetry breaking um, within the zero field churn uh, basis states. Now, numerous results, uh, numerical calculation, uh, 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 calculations have also shown, including this work, that uh, such churn states are um, not energetically favorable compared to uh, other states, in particular, either stripe states, pneumatic, or, um, or intervallic coherent states. And as a result, so at low field, which in this PRL work is uh, shaded in this uh, um, um, uh, uh, green, uh, green region, as well as uh, those, those bars, um, that a competing state wins. It's only at when the field increases, and one can imagine that the churn states uh, can become energetically favorable because they have a finite orbital magnetic moment, which can be aligned with the direction of the magnetic field. And as a result, their energies can become more competitive compared to the uh, zero field, let's say, uh, intervallic coherent states or stripe states. So this is one picture um, out there uh, discussing this uh, correlated churn insulating states. An alternative set of idea comes from, um, I think in this case, the first work is uh, from Andre Young's group in collaboration with Luke Rudermacher in, uh, I think back then he was in ETH. I don't know where he is right now. Um, the, the idea is that, okay, so an alternative to the zero field train insulator um, is that this correlating insulating states, recall that uh, they, for many of the experiments, they're field induced, meaning that they do not really go to very low fields. So the idea is that when we um, um, put on a magnetic field, the maybe the zeroth order problem is to uh, uh, Landau quantize the uh, non interacting uh, um, um, dispersion. And uh, this, of course, uh, can be understood from the fact that uh, typically uh, samples have uh, either hetero strain. And uh, there's also lattice relaxation effects, which broadens the bandwidth. And uh, effectively putting that into some intermediate coupling regime where um, one can understand that such type of flavor symmetry breakings occurs in the um, uh, narrow half sector subbands when a magnetic field turns on, uh, rather than from the zero field uh, train insulating states. Um, so to illustrate this idea, if you look Right, so from the figure, if you look on the left-hand side of the figure, so this is the a um, calculation of the non-interacting half stutter spectrum uh, for, um, I believe this one is tuned away from the magic angle. So you have a, a fairly broad bandwidth. The half stutter subbands can be split into three distinct groups. Um, in addition to the two zero Landa level coming from the two Dirac cones, uh, which over here is marked by the churn plus two. Um, and above and below, there are two churn minus one groups. So overall, uh, the whole group within a, a valiant spin flavor has churn zero, zero uh, has, has a zero churn number. So the sketch is shown on the right-hand side. When the field increases, the, uh, the half stretcher subband narrows, and also the gap to the zeroth level level grows. And the... Uh, as a result, one can imagine a scenario where the symmetry breaking for the correlated train insulating states occurs within this blue blob. Uh, so now, for instance, I have uh, four flavors of train minus one groups below the uh, zeroth Landau level. And uh, I can imagine a scenario where uh, if the interaction is comparable to the bandwidth of this blue blob, uh, rather than the whole thing, then I can have stellar instabilities within this um, uh, restricted Hilbert space rather than involving, involving uh, the entirety of the Hilbert space. So again, so as highlighted over here, um, there's in principle no symmetry distinctions uh, between this picture to the zero field churn insulators, which is presented over here, as both of them corresponds to flavor symmetry breakings. Um, uh, of a uh, that uh, uh, changes the um, uh, uh, the 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 the, uh, the 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 churn number of, of the states. Um. So okay. So 
But here comes to what we are, we, what we did over the past uh, almost 10 months now. Um, the idea is that so far it's uh, mostly pictures and also calculations um, um, that uh, makes uh, certain restrictions to, to, to essentially simplify the problem uh, on, on, on the theory side. So far, there hasn't been a comprehensive uh, study, for instance, uh, uh, of the interaction effects directly in finite magnet field. So what we did um, is essentially uh, uh, pre present a very comprehensive study uh, for a broad range of twist angles, uh, as well as um, uh, for different uh, ratios uh, of uh, for different uh, strengths of the hetero strain, which are uh, in the experiment, and uh, we try to create the finite field. A phase diagram in, the, in this procedure. So as I will show you next, uh, hopefully, um, from the quantitative numerical results, I would be able to make connections between these two pictures um, that I mentioned previously. And uh, I will hopefully also talk about additional correlated turn insulating states that we found, which are not a part of the story previously. So uh, just a very brief introduction to the formalism. Um, everybody knows Hartree Fox, so I'm not going to go into details about that. Um, the starting point for this finite field calculation uh, is that we work with the continuum uh, Bischer McDonald Hamiltonian, and then we consider screened Coulomb interaction. Now, in finite field, the narrow band, the band gap to the remote band uh, does not close for our calculations. So that allows us, or in some um, approximate manner, to throw away the Hilbert space of the remote bands and only keep the, um, the, 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 the low energy sector of the problem. And uh, uh, of course, in this procedure, we would like to introduce hetero strain. And uh, the way to introduce hetero strain to the industry's McDonald Hamiltonian has been illustrated in this really nice work by uh, Bijan and uh, Fulian's group um, in, in 2019. And uh, we uh, 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 did additional works, um, which is the one that I didn't talk about uh, afterwards. And in addition, because we want to go to um, higher flux, like a half flux, the uh, spin Zeman effect would give an energy splitting on the order of, of uh, four milli electron volts. Um, so it's a, it's a reasonably large energy scale as well. That's why we, we, uh, we include uh, this spin Zeman effect as well. So the, um, I won't go into the details except for one thing, which is that the quantum numbers uh, for the Hilbert space in finite magnetic fields um, are given by, so this uh, psi, uh, which is eta and s are the value and spin. Uh, R is the half tetra subbands. Now in zero field, uh, there are two uh, narrow bands, so making that eight flavors. In the presence of a magnetic field at the rational flux ratios P over Q, um, the unit cell gets uh, in the Landau gauge in particular, uh, gets elongated Q times along one direction. And as a result, we have a folding, we have an enlarged unit cell, and then we have a folding, which is this R index. And uh, the magnetic Brillouin zone in this case uh, is uh, given by instead of uh, zero to one for the two quantum numbers k1 and k2, um, uh, one of them is again reduced um, to a fewer. So overall, uh, the degrees of freedom for the Hilbert space in finite field is the same as that in zero field. And uh, what we can do uh, in this procedure is that we can probe um, certain translation symmetry breaking uh, states in the problem. Um, the, uh, right, so, okay, I'm not going to go into that detail, but so the, the key object in hartree fock is the one particle density matrix uh, defined uh, in, in this manner, uh, this Q matrix. We will be using this um, extensively to discuss the phases that we are probing. So let's um, first talk about the results with a 0.2% of hetero strain, which has been reported in many experiments um, uh, of the TPG samples. 
So the tactic we use over here uh, is that we go from the larger twist angle one of uh, 1.38 degrees uh, to, to down towards the magic angle of 1.05 degrees. And because at larger en energy angles, the number of computing states are less, the energetic differences between various states are, uh, Hartree-Fock energetic differences are large. So we are really, we can reliably uh, get a converg convergent uh, phase diagram. So, okay, so what's being plotted? Here for each individual point, um, that corresponds to a self-consistent Hartree-Fock calculation at that particular magnetic flux and electron density. And uh, for each flux, we run the calculations for all the uh, 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 nominal churn states with the uh, integer intercepts S and uh, the churn number uh, we, we detect minus 12 all the way to 12. And uh, to get a convergence result, we uh, 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 the, the the procedure we do is basically run uh, up to uh, uh, some like uh, typically four random initializations uh, initially, and then we uh, we also run more educated guesses uh, with uh, uh, of the initial of the initial density matrix and trying to start from there. And uh, the, yeah, so let me begin by discussing the results for the 1.38 degrees, which is on the upper left panel. The size of the gap, uh, the, 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 the rate, the, 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 each circle corresponds to the uh, exit, a single particle excitation gap that we uh, probe. So uh, if the circle is bigger, that means such a state is a gap state. Uh, from the bulk uh, single particle excitation perspective. It is a churn state and that can be seen from by following the strata lines, which has a finite, uh, finite slope. At larger angles, we uh, expect that there are not much correlated phenomena because the uh, so-called narrow band bandwidth is much larger than the uh, interaction scale. So at best, we expect a small amount of renormalization of the bands due to the interactions rather than uh, a symmetry breaking. And this is indeed what we observe. So over here, notice that there are the uh, um, uh, Landau levels that emanate from the bottom of the band uh, at uh, feeling minus four, um, as well as coming from the charge neutrality point where the Dirac uh, point lies. So we associate this major gap states with quantum Hall ferromagnetic states, uh, which further break down the uh, uh, flavor symmetries uh, within the zero Landau level, uh, either from the bottom of the band or from the Dirac point. And uh, at higher fluxes, uh, you do observe this additional uh, gap states which extrapolates down to, uh, let's say, minus three, uh, minus one along this slope. And we also have uh, uh, gapped states along the minus two, minus two, um, and uh, not so much along minus one and uh, minus three line. So this signatures the onset of the correlated insulating states that we can probe at angles as large as 1.38 degrees. And as we progressively uh, go towards the magic angle, uh, what you can see is that the uh, this uh, four, three, two, one, or three to one sequence extends down to uh, lower and lower fields and become more and more robust as evidenced by the size of the gap. And in particular, if I go um, towards the 1.05 uh, degrees, um, I'm able to detect, to have gapped uh, churn states four, three, two, one, all the way down to the lowest flux ratio that we can study and uh, with no apparent uh, decrease of the size of the gap, suggesting that they're really robustly, uh, they're, they're very robust uh, down, to, down to this flux ratios. Um, of course, you uh, especially if I look at the last figure, so the 1.05 degrees, um, I do observe additional correlated insulating or additional gap states which for instance uh, uh, has, has zero slope at the minus three and zero line, vertical line. Uh, I also have this minus two with uh, with a churn number minus one rather than minus two. 
And uh, similarly, I also um, uh, have additional gapped states, uh, which are smaller gapped. For instance, if I look uh, in between the uh, window of the feeling fraction zero to minus one, there are additional gapped states that seems to extrapolate down to uh, a fractional feeling. And we'll be talking about this uh, at the very end. And these are striped states um, as a short summary. So that breaks translation symmetry. So to characterize the this correlated uh, insulating states at the minus three, minus two, minus one sequences, um, what we uh, do, uh, the way we sorry, study sorry. that is, sorry, yes. Um, I'm sorry, I just want to clarify for the gap state you described in the magnetic field from your calculation. Uh, can you remind me what, what is the result when the, there is no magnetic field? Uh, oh, from just uh, from Hartree Fog. Right, that's an excellent question. I believe, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at uh, I believe so far the Hartree Fog results have mostly been uh, restricted Hartree Fog at zero fields, which means that it does not allow translation symmetry to be broken. The group uh, that allows it to be broken. Um, is uh, Nick Baltic's calculation, which, uh, and I believe it goes by the name of intervalley uh, Kekule spiral ordered states. So such states have a, a, a very soft wave vector. Uh, so if you look at the Hartree-Fock energy uh, landscape, um, uh, there is there is an incommensurate, incommensurate um, uh, uh, wave vector that they were able to probe. For mm -hmm. closer to the magic angle, uh, at the integer feelings minus one, minus two, minus three, they have gapped IKS states. So these are the uh, mm -hmm. turn zero. Of, uh, let me re re I I think is a is a turn zero IKS at minus two. I'm uh, I need to brush my memory a little bit on the statements about minus one and minus three. So let me not comment on that yet. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's different and, uh, from what you say. Uh, the the gap to trim state you say. So it's a uh, is um yeah it's different. Um, I I I will try to make the connection to that. Uh, in later slides. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So. The uh, right, we, we of course we, we call them the correlated Hock Decker error magnets. No, okay, so let me explain what I mean. So, here we can look at the density matrix structure, um, which um, so 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 first thing to the top left panel of this figure, uh, we have the uh, uh we have the essentially we only show this uh, uh, four lines minus three minus two minus one and uh, minus four and uh, the red colored are are um, the symmetry breaking states and the the green colored uh, represents the uh, a first order phase transition into a nearly compressible phase. Now there isn't a universal um, a density matrix describing all the great states, as you can see already that the gaps for those are not monotonic. Um, in fact, there are multiple other intercept, intercepts emanating from, let's say, the band bottom or um, or the charge neutral point, um, which which can be responsible for some of these uh, gap states uh, along the for, for, for the for the green uh, colored ones. So if I look at the density matrix, at higher flux for the uh, this uh, um, uh, gap stays, gap trend stays, uh, what we find is that um, they are predominantly um, similar to the story as proposed by Andrew Young's and Luke Rademacher's group, um, in, in which uh, the claim is the, uh, um, the flavor symmetry breakings within the Hofstetter subbands. And uh, for that, I'm um, essentially labeling the this sorry let me let me uh, re go outside from the full screen because I couldn't really see any pointer so I think uh, this probably works better if that that's okay with you guys 
because uh, this way I can uh, I'm I am able to use the cursor. So uh, yeah, yeah, so this is the ninth interacting uh, half tetra spectra. The red colored uh, is the subgroup uh, of term minus one states uh, of the nine interacting band for this particular angle. The density matrix, this two dimensional map uh, is written um, in this basis. So here at higher flux, we do not have value cohere uh, intervalue coherent state and all of them are flavor symmetry breaking states. Their density matrix are just stacks um, of this, uh, this uh, identical maps for different flavors. And uh, 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 you can see from the color that they are indeed predominantly populating the lower half um, uh, of the nine targeting spectrum. So, okay, that's good, but also notice that even at angles as large as 1.32 degrees, where the energy scale, as you can see, um, is uh, uh, the bandwidth is on the order of the 80 MeV, Coulomb interactions, it's still sufficient to lead to dramatic hybridizations uh, of the low energy uh, uh, bands with the remote bands all the way on the top of the band, okay? So uh, I will try to explain this uh, later on to, to show that this is uh, um, this is actually a very important effect. We try to characterize them as correlated half starter ferromagnets rather than the non-interacting half starter sub and ferromagnets. Um, a way to understand this better is also that I can rewrite the density matrix in the eigenbasis that diagonalizes this zero minus four. Now, as you can judge from the, the density matrix structure in the non-interacting BM uh, basis versus the zero minus four basis, it becomes almost entirely diagonal and occupying only the lower uh, uh, energy term minus one group of the renormalized bands uh, given at along the zero minus four line. And uh, at, as I just mentioned previously, it's a first order phase transition into a nearly compressible state. and uh, there is since there isn't a universal behavior for the low energy sector, uh, so I won't be getting into the details here. So let me move on to the next page. So this one is the smaller twist angle, which shows, uh, for instance, this minus three minus one uh, is a gap state um, uh, uh, going beyond what we can probe in our Hartree-Fock calculations. So I color them uh, in a similar manner compared to the last page, where the red ones corresponds to this correlated half uh ferromagnets, which are the flavors symmetry breakings um, within the predominantly the non-interacting half um the term minus one sector. However, you can indeed see that there are more dramatic spillovers into the remote bands, uh, in this case, compared to the larger twist angles. Um, and that's uh, also sort of obvious from the fact that the bandwidth goes from almost uh, 80 MeV down to 40 MeV. So it's a much narrower uh, non-interacting problem. The interesting phenomena, however, is that there is a first order phase transition along this minus three, minus one, and, and similarly for the minus two, minus two as well. There's a first order trans phase transition uh, to another gapped state. And those are marked by the blue colors. Now, what are these states? So this is the connection to the intervalley uh, coherent states. The way we probe it is to look at the density matrix again, except in this case, compared to the previous case, we cannot just stack different flavors on top of each other. Um, there is a significant amount of intervalley coherence um, as is evidenced from, from the off diagonal matrix elements for the density matrix. And also I'd like to note that the predominant non-zero matrix elements for the density matrix occurs within the lower half of the non-interacting uh, uh, half starter subbands without uh, much matrix elements in, in the upper half. So for this, um, this is the point where I want to make the comparison to the intervalley calculus uh, sorry, uh, incommensurate 
the Cooley spiral ordered state uh, discussed in the zero field. There, the strain it has a similar effect. It widens the non-interacting bandwidth, and uh, the interaction induces um, um, uh, the IKS order, which has a finite wave vector, and which also predominantly mixes the lower half of the non-interacting BM uh, at zero field. So the consistency of, uh, of course, the the uh, the 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 analogy is very uh, apparent because uh, here we also observe mostly within the uh, of the lower half of the of the non-interacting BM. Um, in our calculation, we can indeed observe that such a state. So this is uh, at uh, the the gamma point of the magnetic brilliance zone. We indeed can probe that this one also breaks translation symmetry. Um, um, it, just by looking at how the magnetic translation uh, acts on this object. And however, we are not able to uh, identify a unique um, uh, wave vector as we change the flux. And we associate that with, um, even for the zero field calculations, they have a very glassy manifold um, uh, and uh, different wave vectors. The Hertzschlag energies are very close to each other. So, Within our calculations, we are not able to resolve a single wave vector. So yeah, so this is the part of the new story that we found, which is despite having an entirely gapped state, uh, the nature of the states actually abruptly changes um, between low field to high field. So yeah, so that's the, main result, and uh, I'd like to comment one more thing, which is, uh, okay, why do we call that correlated Hofstetter ferromagnets? So there's another measure we can do, which is the from the term polarization. Uh, this one is given by the uh, expectation value of the um, uh, 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 the sublattice sig uh, operator, sigma z polymatrix. And uh, that one will be maximized if I'm in the zero field turn insulating regime. So if I'm going towards that limit, and that is shown in this uh, upper bound dash curve. Now, if I'm purely for the, is the non-interacting picture of the Hofstetter sub and ferromagnetism, that would be this dash line on the bottom. And our calculations for the four strata lines shown over here are right in the middle so there, as you can see, that uh, there is no way to associate uh, such states with uh, on, on the, by this measure um, to uh, either the zero field turn insulating states or the half stack subvent ferromagnetic states. And uh, this is just to show that we, of course, in the Hartree-Fock, we have the excitation spectra at any given electron density and magnetic field. And uh, we can plot the excitation, single particle excitation gap as a function of flux. Uh, this, of course, can be measured or has been measured um, in the uh, compressibility, uh, uh, integrating the compressibility, integrated compressibility measurements uh, in uh, scanning uh, uh, in SAT experiments. And uh, hopefully, uh, we, uh, if there are interested uh, experimentalists, this that uh, um, we, we can uh, hopefully uh, better characterize uh, the model Hamiltonian to have a more accurate description of the experimental phenomena. And uh, yeah, so so the question we are we 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 still need to uh, understand is okay. So the story above um, seemingly doesn't have much of anything to do with the zero field train insulating states. Uh, people have been pro proposing. Um, in fact, this is uh, one of the most natural things to expect uh, out of the TBG because it features the narrow band, it features strong correlations. So um, ideally, we would like to find a scenario in the model calculations where we do observe the crossover to such a state. So for this, uh, what we did is to remove the heterostrain and consider pristine unstrained um, uh, Hartree-Fock calculation for the for uh, and look at the a, a finite field phase diagram for a, a, a wide range of twist angles. 
Um, similar to the case with string, if I am in the larger twist angle regime, I still have the gradual onset of this uh, correlated half stator fire mag magnets um, that uh, gradually become more and more robust as I uh, dec as the twist angle uh, decreases towards the magic angle. And however, I also observe the you know additional uh, additional states which does not fall within this uh, uh, four three to one sequence, um, but rather have an let's say an opposite uh, mag orbital magnetic moment which. Um, uh, intuit intuitively is, is not favored by the field. But because there are no competing states nearby, um, so we were able to probe such a type of states below a certain critical field. And above that, they're no longer energetically favorable and loses to other states. And this, of course, is uh, consistent with the uh, this schematic picture that I showed previously in the PRL, uh, which also say that at low field, there are other competing states to this correlated train insulating states. And this uh, 4 3 to 1 only becomes stable at higher fields. Going towards the magic angle, um, we observe a qualitatively different behavior. Uh, for one thing, only the minus 1, minus 3, minus 1 turn state is robust. The minus 2, minus 2 full turn polarized state only occurs in an intermediate flux regime, although this one depends very sensitively on, on the model parameters, um, and I will get to that later. And uh, for the minus one, minus three, it's, it's nowhere to be found. Um, in fact, it becomes a compressible state and, and uh, loses to, uh, to other competing states for the entirety of the um, flux regime that we were able to probe. So. Yes, okay, so what's the connection to the zero field turn insulating states? So the way we look at it is again, we park the magnetic flux to be uh, a given value. And uh, we look at this sublattice polarization or turn polarization operator per electron and see how that interpolates uh, between the two limiting cases. And uh, we indeed see for, this is the um, uh, interlayer, the, the uh, intra, um, the, the interlayer tunneling parameters, W0 and W1. Uh, this is the same sublattice A copying and the w, W1 is the, in, uh, is the AB tunneling. By turning this ratio uh, to towards zero, that's the famous uh, chiral limit where we can get exactly flat bands at the magic angle. And the, in realistic materials, model calculations show that they are more likely in the in the uh, much higher uh, ratio range. What we see over here is that at this particular flux that we were probing, that as the angle decreases, the the uh, from this measure, um, the correlated half stator ferro magnet indeed. Um, have a sublattice polarization that's becoming progressively more and more um, uh, consistent with the predictions from the zero field turn insulating states. And at higher twist angles, there is a, a, this represents a phase transition into a compressible state. So that's a, a, a trivial phase transition. Now, at, as, as we increase this ratio, observe that the minus three, minus one, it's still robust all the way down to the lowest flux that we are studying. But the uh, uh, the, the the minus one, minus three, um, first uh, become unstable and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, actually there's a collapse um, based on this term polarization measure. By looking at the full density matrix, we're able to tell that it's because uh, it there's a first order transition. Again, it's, uh, into another gap state, but in this case uh, is a competing um, intervalic coherent state. And uh, as we further increase this ratio, we can see that uh, the, the, the transition going towards higher and higher uh, twist angles effectively making the regime where the, uh, the, the uh, this crossover regime where we can access the strong coupling turn insulating states 
so that one narrow, narrows as we, as we uh, um, progress to go to go to larger and larger values. So the the message over here is that um, within our calculations, uh, in the absence of strain, uh, we indeed observe that there is a smooth crossover. Uh, in this case, focusing on the uh, uh, red line, so minus three minus one curve, there's a very smooth crossover from high angles to low angles between these two limits. Okay, so and uh, there isn't really uh, a phase transition between them. And as mentioned early on, indeed, there are no symmetry distinctions between these two states. And over here, our statement is that uh, by tweaking the twist angle, there's not even a liquid gas type of uh, 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 phase transition between them. So um, yeah, so this is the last slide. Um, as, as I mentioned, um, other than those prominent uh, correlated chair insulating states, we also were able to probe additional uh, gapped states. Um, in this case, we look at, uh, this is the case with strain. Uh, without strain, uh, we also get similar uh, uh, behaviors. So uh, this is an illustrative example. What we do observe are these two red lines mark gapped states that interpolates to uh, half integer, so uh, uh, 0 0.5 and uh, 1.5 respectively. If I look at uh, one measure, which is the occupation number of the non-interacting zeroth Landau level, and look at how that depends on the momentum, recall that uh, we can make use of this quantity as well as how translation magnetic translation acts on such states to be able to tell whether uh, we have broken the, this uh, uh, magnetic translation uh, or not. For uh, these two red lines that interpolate to a 0 0.5, we get a period two stripe. That is, if we look at this occupation number, um, by two times the magnetic translations, the state reverts to the, the, the single particle occupation reversed to itself. And similarly for the bottom one, uh, which is also period two stripe. And interestingly, we were also able to probe this blue line, which is again a gapped state, but that one is a period three stripe, which means that uh, uh, with uh, three, three times the magnetic translations, it reverts back to the same occupation number. So um, the, of course, actually, um, I should mention that we are also able to identify uh, additional uh, states, but not without a large gap. For instance, we were able to probe stripe states emanating from the uh, minus 2.5 and at minus 3.5 as well. But uh, uh, the gap, as you can see, for this parameterization are, are not no, no, noticeable. That's why we're not dis discussing that over here. So, um, and uh, of course, the, the hope is that such states can uh, be probed by uh, further experiment, and uh, um, and uh, yeah, so it serves as a verific a further verification of uh, the uh, how accurate the model that we are looking at are. So uh, with that, uh, thank you very much, and uh, let me just conclude by saying that we're hopefully um, I can convince you that by this finite field, Hartree Fock uh, study. And we were able to establish the nature of the prominent correlated chain insulating states along this strata lines. Um, and there, the, uh, uh, it's, it's a renormalized, um, it's a subband ferromagnetism picture, but in a renormalized or strongly renormalized um, 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 band structure as opposed to the non interacting uh, half uh, band structure. And along these lines, we uh, we always get a first order phase transition of the uh, CCIs into either compressible states at larger twist angles, or another uh, gap state which which features intervalic coherence, either in the form of an IKS type of state, which also breaks magnetic translation uh, symmetry with a uh, symmetry, or that is an intervalic coherent state with 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 uh, with a Q equal to zero order. And we were able to demonstrate that in the absence of strain, 
um, such states uh, interpolate between the, uh, the the two limiting cases, and uh, we don't observe a first, uh, a phase transition between these two limits when the twist angle changes. And of course, the the, the ultimate test, as I alluded to previously, um, is that uh, by making use of let's say SDM measurements in the magnetic field, and hopefully uh, because that gives us a direct measurement of the excitation spectra, hopefully that gives us a more power uh, for quantitative comparisons with uh, the the Hertzfeld calculations that we are doing. Oh, I just realized it's almost three o'clock. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. So, floor is open for questions. Hey, um, Sherry, thanks for the very nice talk. So I was, um, yeah, trying to understand the, the state that you were discussing, the intervalli coherent state at some uh, fractional flux of one eight, I think you mentioned that that also breaks translation symmetry. Um, and I'm just trying to understand a little bit more, how does it break translation symmetry? Uh, you know, and if you were to do STM, for example, you know, what is the signatures that you would look for and how would it differ from this IKS that, as you know, were observed in both TBG and TTG yes. recently? So that's a, that, that, that's a great question. And uh, one question I currently do not have a precise answer to. Mm -hmm. um, so what we can, so far, what we are able to tell from our, basically we can look at the images um, of the density matrix at different uh, wave vectors. And we are able to tell that there's, uh, all of them show intervalic coherence, but there's a, a, a slight variations um, depending on, actually it not only depends on the, um, the flux, uh, model parameters, it also depends on the, uh, um, uh, yeah, so, and uh, I, I should say that uh, for some of this, we detect magnetic trans uh, translation symmetry to be broken with no well-defined wave vector. So it's not a spiral state? Think I think, possible. if anything, it sounds more like a mm -hmm. spiral state because it's a... Uh, um, so, 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 so number one is unlike the stripe states where we clearly can tell it's a period two or period three stripe. Uh, over here, we, we what we can tell is that it breaks translation symmetry, but we were not able to find a period. Yeah, so that's uh, yeah, at least that's how I understand this IKS state. It's a spiral that that um, uh, has a kind of well defined momentum modulation. Uh, yes, you can extract but... that moment, you know, so that's different from what you. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, yeah. So, in short, we so far um, there's no precise answer to that um, uh, regarding what the wave vector is. Yeah. yeah. It's very interesting. Are there other questions? I have a brief one. What do you expect for the stripe states to, to happen at zero field? Will they continue to zero field? Will they not? So in, in, in yeah, 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 uh, great question. So uh, in our calculation, we didn't uh, study the zero field Hartree-Fock, but my understanding is uh, from other calculations, I think uh, Dan Parker, for instance, uh, has a calculation which uh, shows that you can have stripe states extending all the way down to zero, zero field. Um, but I think that one is uh, in, re in reference to uh, uh, the HBN aligned calculations. And you see them only at small angles? I see them at small angles, yes. The larger angled ones, um, these uh, strap states are, are, if they are there, the, the, the gap size are almost uh, borderline incomp incomp incompressible. Any further questions? If that's not the case, thank you again, Shao Yu, for the nice talk. And hopefully see all of you again in one month. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Thank you.